test. Mic check, one, two, three. Good evening, good evening, good evening, Koto. All right, okay, all right. Good evening, everyone. So, this is my favorite side. All right. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I'm blown away. Thank you guys for being here. Welcome. We are about to kick off our revival and our Pine Forge concert. First, can I get a round of applause? A round of applause for Pine Forge Academy, everyone. If you were here during our worship service earlier today you would have received a blessing times two. And we are about to receive more blessings from Pine Forge. Everybody ready? Yes. No, we don't sound ready. Are we ready to hear Pine Forge once more? Yes. All right. So we're going to have a little worship session right before we jump into the meat of the matter. So our worship song is God is able to do just what he said he would do. We know that one, right? So let's just jump up on our feet and we're gonna worship God and lift his name on high, everyone.
Let us stand, please, as we pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again for another blessed Sabbath day. We just want to thank you, God, for your love and for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, O oh God. We call you faithful. Because you're too faithful to fail us. You love us too much, oh God, even to fail us. So even as the rain is coming down on the outside and the hurt has been watered, we pray, oh God, that you send down abundance of blessing upon this place this evening. That our soul will be blessed, oh God. And as this choir prepare to come and to sing, to praise, to lift up your name. We ask your blessing upon each individual. We pray, oh God, that you will bless them. And as they open their mouth this evening, that you use each one, oh God, in a mighty way. Remember the leaders, the directors. We ask your blessing upon them. And we thank you, God, because you brought them here safely. And we pray that when they're going back, you bring them back home safely. And when all is said and done, oh God, we'll give you the praise, we'll give you the honor, we'll give you the glory. Because you're worthy, oh God, to be praised. So we want to thank you in advance. And what you're going to do for us. And when we leave, each one can say it was good for us to be here. To Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Well, welcome again to the Church of the Oranges. We're excited to have each and every one of you here today. We're excited for those who are joining us online for this wonderful, powerful experience, worship experience we'll have this afternoon with the Pine Forge Academy with its choir and its creative arts department. We once again thank Pine, Pine Forge for accepting this invitation. So today, October 14, kicks off our revival here at the Church of the Oranges. The theme for our revival is restoring relationships. I don't know about some of you, that sermon this morning, ouch, ouch. So this is something that, we, that, that, that we're taking very seriously here as we go into this, this fall revival, that we're able to restore relationships. We're talking about reconciliation how to have interactions and to resolve conflicts, very practical things that we as Christians, if we're, all, if we're, if we're our aim is to demonstrate God, God's love, then our relationship with each other, with our family, should be a ministry in and of its own. So that's our goal and that's our focus through um, this revival. And again, invite someone, and as Pastor Brissett said this morning, you may want to start with your family. 
This is very important. So we're excited again to start our revival uh, this week. We'll ask the media team to just play a short promo video for our revival at this time. Once again, we are very excited for our revival that's involved. You see the man, many of our, um, of our speakers there on the screen, but definitely want to highlight very key and important ones, too, because they're, they're, they're home here with us. Um, next Friday night is our youth focus night, and we'll have our very own Sarah Pitter speaking, one of our youth here. So we're very excited for Sarah to to bring the word on Friday night, and that's in person. Friday night, next week, and the 21st are in person, and every other night would, will be virtual. And of course, our senior pastor, Pastor Brissett, we're excited to hear from him. Um, he's going to do, I guess it's a, an open forum discussion, and he has told you to send your questions in where we're talking about conflict resolu um, resolution. And we're so grateful for, for his leadership here in this time that he's been with us. So once again, we're excited to embark on this journey over the next 14 days or so as we aim to restore our relationships. So here this afternoon, once again, want to welcome everyone. And at this time, I want to introduce the Pine Forge Academy Creative Arts Department. I don't know how many of you were here. I don't know how many of you were here this morning for the Children's Chapel, but I was truly blessed in those few moments as they presented God from various angles. And that young man who prayed, he got the message. And that's powerful, and that's powerful. So we're excited to have the Pine Forge Academy Creative Arts Ministry with us today. So the Creative Arts Drama Ministry is a Christian performing arts troupe whose purpose is to support, affirm, and inspire people of all ages to experience a meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Creative Arts Drama Ministry began in 1992 on the campus of Pine Forge Academy on the, di on the, di on the, the direction of Pastor Joel E. Johnson Sr. In an attempt to to find creative ways to help students deal with the contemporary issues they were facing, the ministry was born. From the success of these programs on campus, Creative Arts has received many requests to share these dramatic illustrations with churches, churches away from the campus and has been blessed to travel coast to coast in the United States as well as abroad. So once again, we're excited this afternoon to present to you the Pine Forge Creative Arts um, department led by sis Sister Martine Birmingham. Come on, guys. Come on, come on. So once again, please welcome the Pine Forge Creative Arts Department. Yes? All right, well, this is going to be um, a different type of, of interview. 
Can I have someone hold my mic for me while I do, while I introduce this? Thank you. Uh, give it up for our former CA member, Christoph White, class of 2024. All right, guys. So get ready for the interview, act one, scene one, and action. about to get me tired. Is he back? Aren't you about to ask him questions before the date tonight? Yes, him and my brother. That's They're good. calling it the interview. Well, sign me up for that job because Q is fine and he about to be mine. Baby, <laughs> nobody care about how fine Q is. If he disrespects her father, mm. it's about to be me and him. I just hope I What's can make it to the date tonight. He's about to be my man. My man. I have chemistry. Oh, English. Tell me about him. Q seems like a pretty cool guy. Hmm. It's just that he talks to too many ladies at school. Oh, no. But call me an actor, because you already know I'm on that scene. <laughs> <laughs> I raised you well. We'll see how he handles the interview. We'll see. Yeah. I'll go get the door. questions for you. Hope you can answer them. Of course, I got you. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do I believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. Of course. How was that? How was that church with my mom? Awesome. Yep. It's true. All right. What is your GPA? My GPA? Yes. Um, right now, mm. I'm not too sure. Not but sure. I heard it's pretty high. It, mm. It's up there. It's mm. up there. You said it's up there. Okay. Yeah, of course. All right. What are your plans after you graduate from college? After I graduate from high school, I actually do plan on going to UGA. Yeah. UGA? What's that? Huh? Like, what's UGA? I never heard of that before. You never heard of UGA? No. UGA is actually a university in Georgia. University of Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, Pops, I think I should ask him some questions. All right, go ahead. Mr. Quentin. Yo, what's up? You got gas money for the car? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I pulled it up like two, two weeks ago. Two weeks. Yeah. What do you plan on taking my sister tonight? Um. You heard of Arby's? Yes, I heard. Yeah, we're going to Arby's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, what do you plan on doing after? Um. I plan on bringing her home. You know, she back home to your house. Mm -hmm. Your house. Your house. Your house. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, Quentin. This is the last and final question I have for you. Do you have protection? Huh? Mm -hmm. Do you have protection? Mm -hmm. what, what type of protection? Mm. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I mean this type of protection. <laughs> I wanted me to grab all the too early. Oh, Lord! I didn't even know you was like that for real. Of course. Of course. Mom, this is Quentin. Quentin, meet my mom. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, it's nice to meet you, Quentin. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah, 
Unfortunately, Quentin will not be taking my baby girl out tonight. What? <laughs> questions for you. Of Hope course. you can answer them. Always, always. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Of course I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm actually going to give a sermon next week mm -hmm. on John 3, 16. Oh, nice. Mm. nice. All right, what is your GPA? GPA is currently 3.5, trying to get to a 4.0 though. Mm. Nice. Nice. Very good. All right, so what are your plans after you graduate from high school? Well, after I graduate from high school, I'm going to go to Oakland and get my degree in theology. <laughs> okay. Yo, Pops, watch this. Okay. Yo, Wes. Junior? We got gas money for the car. Of course I got gas money. What do you plan on taking my sister tonight? You know the Cheesecake Factory on the corner? Of course I do. Man. I got paid, so we're going to the Cheesecake Factory. What do you plan on doing after that? Oh, we coming straight back here, 9 p.m. sharp. Thank you. Your turn. Okay, Wesley. This is the last and final question I have for you. Of course, what is it? Do you have protection? Um, on my car? Yeah, I got it, I got it. Mm. No, I mean, do you have protection? Oh, like you mean like seatbelts in the car? Of course. No. She's gonna be safe. No. I mean, do you have this on protection? <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Clark, I'm a, I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, why, you think I would be this type of man? I'm only in high school, and Mr. Mr. Clark, I'm not that type of guy. I, I'm waiting till marriage, and my body's a temple, your daughter's body's a temple. I must wait and don't be cheap. And I'm a sin. Aren't you the head deacon at my church? Who do I look? Fuck off, Mr. Clark. Junior, you know, I love you like a brother, man, but I, I've got to go. There you go. I've got to go. There you go. Know. So let me go. I've got to go. No. Oh, no. Uh, is this your mom? Okay. Yes, this is my mom. Mom, this is Mrs. Clark, this is nice to meet you, Mrs. Clark. Hi, nice to meet you, too. So, are we all set for the date tonight? Huh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What? Yes. I gave you permission to take my daughter out tonight. Okay. Wait, uh, actually? What, yeah, what yes. About? Actually, yes. Matter of fact, do you have a driver's license? Uh, yeah, I drove her, actually. Yeah, matter of fact, here. These are the keys to my Dodge. Oh, oh yeah! Do you not know 
that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You have to think, what kind of father would take such a drastic measure to protect his child? Well, we had that experience. For our Heavenly Father was so desperate to save that he sent his only begotten son to save us. So this is our message tonight. The message is not old. God is, is forever, no matter what the time is. Our bodies do not belong to us. However, the choice is ours. And even if, when we mess up, there are consequences but there's always grace and mercy in Jesus Christ, amen? amen? And last but not least, we are Pine Forge Academy's very own Creative Arts Ministry. God bless you and thank you. Take a bow, thank you so much. Thank you again, Creative Arts Ministry. That was phenomenal. Um, at this time, as we have our intermission while the, the choir gets ready, I'd like to bring up um, the VP at Pine Forge Academy. Adrian Rhodes. So she can share um, some remarks with us. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adrian Rhodes. I currently hold lots of titles. Uh, I am vice principal at Pine Forge. I am currently interim principal also at Pine Forge. I teach English, I teach history, and I travel with a handsome group of young people. It is a blessing to be with you all on this evening. I wanna share just a few things with you um, and I don't know if our team is ready. Do you all have my pictures up there? Yes? So Pine Forge has been around for a little over 75, almost 78 years, and we are a campus full of history. In the past year, though, we've started a new renovation project. We're renovating our boys' dorm, Handy Hall, and if you've visited Handy Hall, uh, you know that this is brand new. So what you're looking at, what you're seeing right now is a room in the boys' dorm. If you go to my next shot, um, this is both sides of the room. Each room has its own air condition, its own heating. Um, it has brand new flooring, brand new paint, brand, brand new plumbing, you name it, it's brand new inside. This is the barbershop at Handy Hall. Uh, the company that we are contracted through was so kind. They came and met our students and walked our campus and said, we wanna give back to you. And so they have donated not only the flooring that you see, but this room has new uh, sinks, it has new chairs, new furniture. They've donat donated all of that. This is the ADA, the, health, the handicap room in Handy Hall. So we are now able to take care of those young men who might need a little more assistance. You'll notice that it's slanted there in the middle that's so that we have wheelchair access. Our young men walk through and we're very excited. Okay, we'll go, go to my next picture, I hope. Uh -uh. So while they're getting there, I want to tell you about the boys' dorm bathroom. If you've been to Handy Hall within the last almost 50 years, um, Handy Hall's bathroom was a general high school bathroom. Uh, it had the one spigot pole with, the, with four spigots on it and partitions for them to be able to take showers. The new bathroom is absolutely beautiful. It has six shower stalls with a large uh, handicapped shower stall. 
It looks like marble inside. It's beautiful gray tile with an epoxy floor. Uh, we're really, really happy about that space. The boys have walked through and are excited. Several of them said, Miss Rose, it looks like we've moved into college already. I said, let's keep it looking like we've moved into college already. It is really a beautiful space to see. I hope they can find that picture. I think they're having some trouble up there. But it's a wonderful thing to know that your help and your donations have gotten us to this place. Kimbrough Hall is also in the midst of renovation. If you've been to Kimbrough Hall, Kimbrough is a little over 60 years old. Um, and it's had a few, a few moments where it's been renovated. Let me tell you about what happened this year. This summer, when the girls left and we gutted the bathroom, we found that the original tile is a one-by-one one tile. It's about like that. And that one-by-one one tile that was put down in the early 60s had some asbestos in it. And so we shut down the building and we called in a team and they took care of all of that. And so all of that's gone. But it took them what they thought would take three to four days two months and they've gutted that bathroom down to absolutely nothing and so there's no tile there was there was nothing and once we got all the way down there we had steel beams that had been in place since the building was put in place and they had some rot on them and we found there were some structural issues let's just say this God's covering is real when we start talking about girls moving in and out of those rooms and walking from space to space, the Lord covered Kimbrough Hall. And so a lot of structural things had to be done. Here's the blessing in all of it. Not only were we able to repair it, but when our team came back through and the inspectors did their air quality test and all that good stuff, they said it is as if there has never been anything in this building. It is a blessing. And so now, the, the young ladies who haven't yet been able to walk through Kimbrough Hall, because it just wasn't quite safe enough, will be able to take them in next week. There's new flooring, there's new cabinetry, there are new closet doors, there's new mirrors going up. There's new framing in the bathroom, so now you can see what the renovated bathroom will look like. It is wonderful. We have a fantastic group of students. We told them in the summertime, Listen, we're going to start school, we're going to start a little late, and we're going to move into the cabins. And they said, the what? <laughs> and I said, we're going to move into the cabins, but we're not going to be there for long. These young people have made the cabins home. They've got real comfortable. I walked in and said, oh, this is nice. They said, yeah, Miss Rose, this is temporary housing. And I said, oh, this looks real good. We want them to know how much we care about them. And in so doing, this renovation is happening. We're grateful to our parent, AEC. Allegheny East Conference said, don't worry about it. We said, we don't have the funds to do this. It has to be done, but we don't have the funds to do it. They said, don't worry about it. I have watched them write checks. I got a call one day and it said, come to the conference office. I said, okay, what did I do this time? <laughs> and I walked in and I sat down in the treasury department and I watched the treasurer write a check for a million dollars. No sweat. I said, uh, I said, so, uh, you're not going to take my check then this month. He said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, I'll call you in next month when we write the next one. AEC has promised to cover us. The beginning of the project was only supposed to be two and a half million dollars. We are at five and a half right now. And AEC said, don't worry about it. We care about our students. We care about our teachers and our staff. So when I know and I tell people that I serve an almighty, awesome God, he is almighty, awesome, and amazing. 
there is nothing too hard for my God. So I don't know which God you're serving, but the one that's at that campus where I am is amazing. So I say that and I say this, I bring you greetings from the River Manitani in a little place called Pine Forge, in a little place in Pennsylvania, where we have 105 students, 30 plus staff, and we enjoy watching God move on our campus every day. So as I get ready to take my seat, here are a couple of things. One, Academy Day is coming up fast. It's in November. Look for more information to come. We, we want your young people to come. We want you to come so that you can take a look at what God is doing for us. Two, if I have parents who are here who are, I'm not going to say suffering. You're living under the umbrella of God's blessing. Stand and wave your hand at me. I know I have some. There you are, parents. You out there eating beans and rice like I am at the house. I have a senior, and I understand. So we are grateful for you. And finally, as you go home after you've had a moment with us this evening, and you think to yourself, I don't have a penny to give those children, and I want to give that school something, start by giving us prayer. Start by asking the Lord to just cover Pine Forge. Pine Forge has been in that place for all of that time because God protects it and keeps it there. And because we know that he gave us that place, I'll say this, and then I'll sit down. I met descendants of the family that the conference bought the property from yesterday. This is the great, 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 great grandson of Thomas Rudder. He and his wife knew nothing about Pine Forge. And they started researching because they knew about the Rudder family. And then they found out about us. And they called, and we, we couldn't get back, and we were trying to get people for them, and they finally said, we're just gonna drive on up there. And they came up yesterday, and I started talking to them about where Pine Forge originated and what those buildings were for us, and we bought it from their family. And the wife said to me, this property that we're standing on is worth more than any money can buy not just to my family, she said, but to all of these children who are on this campus. She said, I've never seen a place like this where your young people move back and forth freely and they can learn about God in a safe place. She said, the world around us is falling apart and yet your young people have the opportunity to learn about God. She was mind blown. She said, I read that this property cost you a little over $40,000. I said, it did, and it was given to us. That money was posted by Dr. Gracie Kimbrough and tried to give her a history lesson there. And she said, so I did some research. And if we were to have sold this property at cost, you're looking at 2 to $3 million at that time. You understand Pine Forge is 78 years old, right? We're on over 600 acres of property, right? And this, this woman said, I wouldn't have given it to anybody else. She said, please have us back. Our family is in steel and we want to invest in this place. Her husband, who is the actual descendant, just stood there and cried. He walked over to the church. He said, there's a church on this property? I said, yes. He said, there's a church. I see children praying over here. I, I, see ch I don't see that girl's, that skirt is nice and long. <laughs> God is moving, and we're grateful. So when you think of us, if you can share with us monetarily, we're always excited. But more than that, pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give Vice Principal Rose another hand of applause. We're thankful. 
We're thankful for her service and her sacrifice. We have other staff members of the academy here. If you are a part of the staff, faculty of Pine Forge Academy, would you stand, let the folks see you as well? Stand up, faculty, stand up. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Where is, ah, uh, listen, this gentleman to my left, the far left over here, this, this handsome stately gentleman, Brother Taylor, has been driving the bus. He's been driving the bus. He and another gentleman by the name of Ernie Norwood, they were driving the bus when I was a student. And it wasn't that long ago, don't do that. Don't, don't do that, it wasn't that long ago. But, <laughs> but it's good to see um, the longevity and the faithfulness of all of these faculty and staff. And we thank God for you. We understand that, um, that all of you went through a trying time trying to navigate COVID and teach and keep the kids on track, and we thank you. You heard Vice Principal Rhodes. You saw the pictures, some of the pictures of what's happening at the school. To God be the glory for the great things he is doing. And we have a chance to partner with the school to help them uh, cross the finish line. Did y'all hear what I said? Help them cross the finish line. Now, we're not, we don't ask people to give certain dollar amounts. We don't do that. We understand that it's not about equal giving but equal sacrifice. And we're lifting an offering this evening in order to help Pine Forge Academy. Vice Principal Rose barely scratched the surface of what the school probably needs. But because we support Christian education, because we support Christian education, because we believe that the mission of the school is what has helped to nurture and to groom and to grow productive citizens in the body of Christ. This evening, I want you to prayerfully and cheerfully give what the Lord has laid on your heart so that Church of the Oranges can be remembered by heaven as doing what they can to help our school. Amen? Amen. So, and just, I'm going to ask our deacons to come, and I'm going to ask, Russell, would you please, we want you to, you can give either physical means or you can give virtually. Um, you can send your offering through Church of the Oranges in your blank line. Please put um, PFA offering. We'll be happy to make sure that they get it. You can also um, you can also scan the QR code on the screen and it will take you to a place where you can give to Pine Forge Academy this evening. We want you to continue to pray for the academy, continue to pray for those uh, students. They are away from their home. They are learning about God. They're becoming mature students in citizenship and academics. The school has come a long way from when my wife and I were students. Um, Pine Forge Academy has turned out people like Barry Black. Pine Forge Academy has turned out people who serve the wider community like Andre McDonald. Pine Forge Academy has produced the likes of Janice Chandler and Lloyd Mallory Jr. Pine Forge Academy has produced the likes of Joey Kibble of Take Six. Pine Forge Academy produced your senior pastor. Y'all so kind. God bless your hearts. And his wife. Yeah. God bless your hearts. You're so kind. But we want to be a blessing to this school. Um, what BP Rhodes did not say to you was... There's a sense of acceptable pride to look at the renovations considering when we were students, it didn't look like that. When she described those handy hall showers, it was triggering for your pastor. 
I had flashbacks. <laughs> and I'm so glad to see what the Lord is doing, how the Lord is blessing, how the Lord is keeping. Um, so many things have happened, and they are only because of the grace of God. You, you should also know that there is a section of that property that uh, was used as the Underground Railroad. Pine Forge Academy has rich history, rich history, and we want to make sure that as long as we are breathing, we're doing our part to keep the academy alive. Amen? Amen. So after the concert, you can go to VP Rose, any of the faculty members, and you can, you can, you can talk to them and find out more. You may want to get info. Maybe you have a student or you have a neighbor who has a student that you think could benefit from going to Pine Forge Academy. See them. See them. Prayerfully ask God what you should do. And let's do our very best to keep our school alive and well. Is that all right? Deacons seem to be almost through the church. All right. All right. We've got people coming in. We'll let them get seated. Then we're going to pause. We're going to pray over this gift. If you've given virtually, we thank you as well. Amen. Are you ready for the Pine Forge Academy Choir? Listen, let me say this about creative arts. Let me say this about creative arts. I, I'm, I don't know if I want to say this. I'm going to tell my age in a second. Like, so I was a student when creative arts started. And they were tackling issues that we weren't, that we were afraid to talk about publicly back then, and I thank them for continuing to wrestle with the relevant issues because if we don't know it, our children experience things on a daily basis you wouldn't even imagine. And so thank you Creative Arts for being obedient to the way the Spirit is leading and for being truthful and transparent to help us understand what our young people are going through and dealing with. And, um, yeah, I, you, you, some triggering things. Yeah, I wish, I wish some dude would come to my house and they talk about accepting a, I wish he would. <laughs> it would be a misunderstanding, Al. <laughs> would you help me welcome also the pastor of the Irvington Church, Pastor J. Alfred Johnson III and his wife, they are here today. Al, won't you stand, let him see you. I think you all know Pastor Al, J. Alfred Johnson. He was also in school with us, and we're not that old. Amen, by the grace of God. Let's pray over the offering, and then after the prayer, let's, let's prepare to be continually blessed through Pine Forge Academy. Now the Pine Forge Academy Choir will minister. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We pray that it stretches and you multiply it abundantly. Continue to impress upon our hearts the need to sow into our young people that the resources they need to grow, to develop, to be successful will be provided by those of us who recognize the need for your children to be taught of the Lord through limitless possibilities. Thank you for the giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you help me welcome now the Pine Forge Academy Choir under the direction of Mr. Jared Rosebar. serene and filled with the musings of the divine king. There's a place 
hidden in the hills of the northern regions, a place where the air is light and the grass is what the old timers might call rolling green, a place like you've never seen the scene serene and filled with the musings of the divine, can you hear it? A place where roots have rhythms and underground is a sound of freedom in the soil, saturated by songs of royalty disguised as the reprise that tells the muddy Jordan to get away cause the river is deep and Moses has to go down in a low swinging chariot to get his people to understand exactly why the Negro speaks of rivers. If you listen closely, you can hear the souls of these folks sending praises to the Most High. Know them, breathe them, can you see them? They come from all across the land. They are the living, breathing prayers of their ancestors in human form. They come with a royal lineage that is greater than the number of the stars or the sands of the sea. They are life-breathed thoughts, spoken from the lips of divinity and woven within their being. Beating from their chest is a melody from heaven that rains rays of sunshine and silver linings, a song of songs from bonds of the mercies. It is not just a song, it is an experience. It is the hand clap of the Almighty. It is the footstop of those who have tread the path through the blood of the slaughtered. It is the finger snap of the gatekeepers that cause the children to fall in line. It is the song that breaks generational curses yet binds us at the soul. Oh, sing a new song. It won't be long. So come along and join the Welcome to the space. Welcome to the place. Welcome to the sound, welcome all around, welcome one and all, welcome great and small, welcome to the experience.
Good evening, Church of the Oranges. It's such a pleasure once again to be with you. Um, you all didn't hear the, you all didn't come here to hear me talk, correct? Okay, great. It won't hurt my feelings. It's all right. I'm, I'm going to be okay. So I'm going to keep on moving um, so that we can just continue to bless you with all that God has prepared. Um, I'm going to call to the piano um, one of our student accompanists, Ms. Kennedy Henderson. Um, and in this piece, uh, taken, uh, put together by Craig Courtney, but also taken from the scripture in Matthew, and it's really appropriate today. It says, come to me, all you who are tired, who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. This is come to me. I'm also going to call forward, uh, we have a quartet, uh, it's Kayla Letson. Kenny Campbell. <laughs> Mr. Justin Edgar. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Mr. Lawrence Wells.
So this next piece uh, speaks to us in the language of Latin. It is a Brazilian composer by the name of Hermani Aguiar, and what he does is takes the what was known as the earliest form of church music known as Gregorian chant, um, and he takes this Brazilian flair to it um, and really just puts those two styles together to uh, proclaim the message that is in Psalm 150. We know it, we're familiar with it. Praise him uh, upon the high sounding cymbals. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Let everything that hath breath, what? Praise All right, so we will uh, minister. This is Psalm 150. give an opportunity uh, now for a few students uh, to really just show uh, the goodness of God in the talents that they have. Um, my full choir, I'm going to ask that you would gently make your way uh, to these front pews here. Um, this first uh, rendition that you are going to uh, take note of um, we just have a gifted and anointed student in the, in the area of poetic gifting um, by the name of Azrael Pravet. She's a senior this year. And she is going to bless us through spoken word. And we're going to um, just kind of sit back and, and uh, minister with her on that. Um, and then we have a few surprises. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll talk to that in just a second, but um, would you all help me welcome Azriel Prevet as she comes to me. Good evening, everyone. Um, as he said, my name is Azriel Prevet, and the piece that I will be doing, uh, presenting tonight, is called Happy in My Own Skin. And I pray that you all are blessed. I love my black. I love my hair. It moves slow, but it grows. I love my skin when in the sun it glows. I love my dark beauty found deep within. I am happy in my own colored skin. I love my hair. The endless teasing and scarves I bear, the wandering eyes that love to stare, the naps and the kinks, the lengthy strands that love to shrink. The numerous styles I've had to rethink. I love my hair. I love my skin. The sun makes it pop from all the dark melanin. And because there's a sense of pride found deep within, 
I am in love, absolutely in love with the color of my beautiful skin. I love my look, my hazel eyes that leave everyone else in the room shook, the extra fat under my arms that helps me cook. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those thick curls that hold in place every crochet hook. I love my look. I love our people. I love our modern churches without steeples. Our unique names like Malik, Diamond, and Cecil. Our history that comes crashing in like a flood. Our race that has been raked through the mud. The strength that is found deep within my blood. I love our people. I love our food. It always brings a happy and a carefree mood. <laughs> Better stay out of mama's way or else you'll be screwed. Mac and cheese, collards, sweet potato pie, and don't y'all let me forget fried chicken. Steps to the kitchen they often quicken, and the bellies of its consumers it never fails to thicken. I love our food. I love our music. It's almost as if our stuff is therapeutic. Jazz, R&B, rap, and gospel, they course through our veins. That's because there are genres that are wide and don't really constrain because they break up those emotions and pains that have resulted in heavy chains. I love our music. I love our dance. I love our colorful shoes and our fancy pants. The words that go with each new stance, the twists and jumps that put you in a trance. Popping, locking, and break are just a few, and because this phenomenon isn't particularly new, it's been tried through and through. I love our dance. Have you grown into your own skin? No matter your color, can you see that you're beautiful deep within? If not, try looking from God's point of view. He took seven days to create a perfect world for me and you. You know what? Scratch that. I'm telling you now to grow into your own skin. You can't expect to become better than you are now if it's your previous self you can't win. Stop the doubt and let a little faith in. I need you to stop being upset and accept the fact that you and I are not the world's idea of perfect. Take a step back from yourself, a look in the mirror and a moment to reflect. God made you black and we're in a sinful world. What did you expect? But because God made you black, that means your color is not a defect. See, you are black and that's something you should learn to respect. I said it once and I'll say it again. Sweetheart, your color is not a defect. Okay, so these, uh, this following group of people don't know that I'm about to do this. Um, but I promise you, they are completely prepared for what I'm about to do. So we had a group of seniors last night, gentlemen. So I'm gonna ask that group of gentlemen, if you would, just come forward. So, um, most of you all are familiar with Take Six Emeritus Cedric Dent. Yes, you've heard of him before. When, before Cedric Dent um, had the group Take Six, uh, he had a quartet back in the, the streets of Detroit. Um, and he pins this arrangement that at this point is, is actually closer to about 30 years old. Um, and this is Cedric Dent's uh, setting of Kumbaya, My Lord.
I now want to bring to you, and I have to make this point, um, not because I'm like uh, shy about what they're going to do, but you're going to hear and uh, get the opportunity. So these three young ladies, there's been a tradition for the, over the past few years um, of a, a, a trio, soprano trio that sings um, during our concerts. And typically, most times, they have, you know, some weeks in advance to prepare these uh, next set of young ladies, they learned this last night. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't say that to be shy about what they're about to do, but I say that just so that you can understand the gifting um, that God has given these three young ladies. So I want to call forward uh, Ms. Rosalie. Yeah. Janai Wilson. And Miss Malin Chaver.
Um, these next two pieces, uh, and we're going to we're going to move quickly as the, the night is, is is moving with us. Um, a competition piece won a prize overseas uh, back in 2004. Um, this piece in another language, Yubi Latte Dale, and then immediately following that will be uh, a piece by one of my mentors, uh, who really just kind of changed my life when I had the chance to uh, be under his tutelage and, and leadership. He's over at uh, University of Maryland now, but Director Emeritus of the Oakwood University Aeolians, Dr. Jason Max Ferdinand, um, pins this piece uh, so appropriate for today, especially with all the calamity that we see going on, the wars, the natural disasters, the craziness uh, that is happening just right next door to us. I don't know if you all realize um, that there was a convicted killer that was not too far from Pine Forge Academy, you know, running around doing God knows what. And so it's just so appropriate to be able to know and sing that no matter what happens, we are safe in the arms of Jesus.
We're going to keep moving right along. A spiritual from this morning. I hope that you all enjoy. Uh, this is our own fun arrangement. This Negro spiritual, Elijah Rock. Oh, 
Cause all I seem to do is hurt me
How many of you are grateful that there's a balm in Gilead? It was said this morning, you don't really know how to appreciate healing unless you've been sick. And I just wonder if I'm talking to anybody who's been sick before and God has been a balm in Gilead to heal your sin-sick soul. We don't have much left. And I let the Holy Spirit speak through the words of this song. Um, but as they're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak, you realize that, you know, we are a people of prophecy. And, um, you know, we have harped on many a day about, you know, the signs of the times and wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in various places and famine and pestilences. Y'all watch the news, right? David, David says it like this, Lord. He says, Lord, how long will we have to wait uh, for your rescue, for your salvation, for your deliverance? And uh, one of my idols, if you will, somebody who I, I, I've always looked up to their life, preached a sermon saying, how long? Not long. And it simply says, uh, this that he that shall come will come and will not tarry and I'm just excited about being able to go home to a place that I don't have to pay bills at mm. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about going to a place that when I go grocery shopping Jesus already paid it all Amen I'm excited about going to a place where we will never have to say goodbye again. Only see you around. Now, how long we're going to have to wait to get there? I, not long. And I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I am sure of, that if Jesus leads, we're going to get there someday, y'all. Hold the faith. Jesus is soon to come. I shall get home someday.
one. Let's put our hands together and give God the praise one more time. For the High Point Academy Choir and Creative Arts. Let's put our hands together for them. Wow, all that needs to be said has been sung. Let me say that one more time. All that needs to be said has been sung. We're getting ready to, to dismiss, but I want to thank the faculty, the staff, the Pine Forge Academy, the students, these wonderful students, who got on the bus early this morning and have ministered out of their substance. And for that, we are grateful. We want to also pray a prayer of blessing, of consecration over this choir and creative arts. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of us who are, who feel anything, whether our kids go to school down the street or attend Pine Forge Academy, our heart beats heavily all day long that the blood of Jesus be over our children. You heard Mr. Roseboro talk about the escaped inmate who was not far from the campus several weeks ago. And I'm just crazy enough to believe that God steadied his hand of protection between these children and that escaped inmate. I'm crazy enough to believe that praying for the blood over the doorpost of our children still works. And every school year that a young person goes to school and every day that they come home, come home from home week, and you see them growing and maturing and developing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. We ought to give God praise. But his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. For, for the church at large, we're entering into, we're in revival, and so we'll be in revival virtually Sunday through Wednesday. We'll be back here in person on Friday night to support one of our young people as she shares the gospel. We'll come together, of course, on Sabbath, 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Please, please, please. Send your questions in by texting reconcile, the word reconcile, to the church phone number. Please, please help us create a safe space for transparent conversation by making your questions anonymous. Amen. Making your questions anonymous. We'll enter into virtual again on the 22nd with starting with Dr. Abdel George, concluding with Dr. Dwayne Frazier, and we'll be back here on Friday night, October 27th, and then Sabbath, October 28th. God has individuals who have already made the decision to be baptized into the family of God. So on October 28th, we'll have baptism. We are also for the choir, we, we know that you have sung yourselves hungry. And so after the benediction and you've received instructions from faculty and staff, we ask you to come upstairs so that you can get something to eat before you hit the road. Would you help me thank God and appreciate our Minister of Music, Elder Terrell Hutchinson, for the invitation, bringing the choir here. For our media team, Brother Alistair, Brother Rollins, up in the booth, the unseen heroes, we thank God for them as well. Let's stand to be dismissed. Thank you, Pastor Johnson, for being with us this evening. I know that you preached last night, preached this morning, and came this afternoon. Yeah, I pray that God
God replenishes your strength. It helps when you got a son in the choir, too. And daughter. And daughter. Still. She's a senior. Man. Time is flat. I can't talk. My son's about to get married. I can't talk. I can't. I can't. I can't. But let's, let's bow our heads to be dismissed. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. God, we thank you for the gift of music ministering to our hearts, the gift of acting, drama presentation, ministering to our hearts. Thank you for the young people that you have at Pine Forge Academy that are in this choir in creative arts, the balance of the student body still on the campus. We thank you for your anointing on their lives. We pray, oh God, that you continue to press the olive oil of anointing over them. That the anointing would flow not only through their singing, but through their academics, through their citizenship. We pray, oh God, that your spirit would work in them and the faculty continuously and daily as they walk the journey of preparing themselves to meet our Lord and Savior when he comes again. I pray, oh God, that as these children ministered in public, they are not immune to private pain. Whatever it is that has been troubling them this week, whatever anxiety, apprehension, emotional fatigue, physical fatigue, whatever dilemma, whatever hurdle met them this week, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that today that hurdle will be will be jumped over, that obstacle will be conquered in the name of Jesus. Replace their grief, their anxiety with the peace that passes all understanding. I pray, oh God, you guard their heart and their mind. God, would you continue to place a strong and powerful hedge of protection around Pine Forge Academy campus. We pray, oh God, that in these days that we live, that you would remember your children that you would look down from heaven and literally protect them hand by hand with your omnipotence. God, may they never encounter danger that will harm them. May they be returned to their families during home leave safe and sound. And God, when trouble does come, help them to remember. Help us to remember. God in whom we sang about tonight, who is strong and mighty, great in battle. Now, God, we're leaving this place, some headed back to their homes, some headed back to school, headed to wherever they have to go to next. God, I pray that not only would your omnipresent hand take them to their next destination safely, but God, I pray that when head hits pillow tonight, it'll not just be sleep, but rest. I pray, God, that you would make crooked places straight and rough places plain in homes tonight, dear God. May it be tonight that when our bodies lie down, we'll be able to do it with the assurance that we have done what the Lord has asked us to do. And we are refreshed and revived to wake up tomorrow by your grace to continue to run on and see what the end's going to be. This is our prayer in the marvelous and majestic name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let everyone say together, amen, amen, and amen. You may consider yourselves dismissed. Please, while you're leaving, make sure you affirm and appreciate these young people for the marvelous job they've done this evening. So, so um, if you're going to go and get changed, get changed quickly. Um, as soon as you get changed, go upstairs, get 